melting point is a physical property inherent to a compound's identity. Measuring the melting point of a solid is a chemistry technique that can be used to determine the purity and sometimes identity of a compound. Here we are melting a pure substance, represented by dancers in green. It's important to realize that the term melting point is a bit misleading. Compounds actually melt over a range. When reporting a melting point, you need to report when the compound first begins to melt, as well as when it's completely melted. The purer the compound, the smaller and tighter the melting range. Let's take a look at the same compound, but now with impurities. Here the big rubber balls act as impurities. As you can see, the molecules don't stack quite as well when impurities are around. Because of these impurities, molecules aren't packed as densely, and therefore they melt at a lower temperature and have a larger, broader melting range. This is how melting point can be used to determine the purity of a compound. Now let's talk about a technique called mixed melting point and see how it can be used to identify a compound. To take a mixed melting point, you first must figure out the melting range of the unknown compound. Here we have an unknown that melts from 120 to 122 degrees Celsius. Let's say we know that both tropic acid and iodoform also melt around 120 degrees Celsius. In order to figure out if the unknown is tropic acid or iodoform, we're going to have to take a mixed melting point. To begin, we first take a bit of the unknown and a bit of tropic acid and mix it together really well. Then we're going to load it into a capillary tube and measure the melting point. Here we find that the mixture of tropic acid and unknown melts at a lower temperature than 120 degrees Celsius and has a broader melting point. Let's take a look at the melting at a molecular level to figure out why. Even though both the unknown and tropic acid have the same melting point, the mixed melting point tells us that they are not the same compound. When the two compounds are mixed, the molecules have a hard time stacking together. And just like earlier, you can imagine the tropic acid acting as an impurity to the unknown compound, lowering the melting temperature and broadening the melting point. Now we should look at the mixed melting point of the unknown compound with iodoform. We repeat the same procedures as we did with tropic acid, melting the unknown with iodoform loading a capillary tube, and taking a melting point. We find that the mixture of iodoform and the unknown melts at a temperature around 120 degrees Celsius, and it has a narrow melting point. This tells us that the identity of the unknown is iodoform. Let's take a look at the melting at a molecular level. The identity of the unknown compound is actually iodoform. Therefore, when we mix together the two compounds, we aren't introducing any impurities or other new compounds. The molecules are able to stack together nicely because they are one and the same, and this is how and why the melting range is exactly the same as before we mix the two solids together. This is how mixed melting point can be used to figure out the identity of an unknown solid. Often, the melting point of a compound is influenced by the shape of the compound because it determines how well the compound stacks. If you have a very flat molecule, like anthracene, it will have a higher melting point than a floppier molecule, like biphenyl. Anthracene melts between 210 and 213 degrees Celsius, and biphenyl melts between 68 and 70 degrees Celsius. This is because the flatter, more constricted compound anthracene stacks better than the biphenyl, which has a free carbon-carbon rotation making it less flat and less able to stack next.